the next paragraph, paragraph 12, now describes these two dreams. First is the world's dream. A brother separated from yourself, an ancient enemy, a murderer who stalks you in the night and plots your death, yet plans that it be lingering and slow of this you dream. This is everyone's dream. Right? And ultimately, who is the murderer who stalks you in the night, plots your death, that, but plans that be lingering and slow? Ultimately, that's God, the ego's version of God. Because we're all going to die. A long, slow death. It might take 40, 50, 70, 80, 100 years, but we know how it's going to end. All right. So now let me read the secret dream. We're still in paragraph 12, sentence 2. Yet underneath this dream is yet another in which you become the murderer, the secret enemy, the scavenger and the destroyer of your brother and the world alike. I am the sinner. I'm the one who destroyed heaven, and I'm the one who wants to destroy everyone in my life so God will punish you instead of me. None of us is in touch with that. We're in touch with this. We're in touch with the world's dream. You're doing this to me. And the secret dream in which I'm the murderer, I'm the scavenger, lays buried. And if it lays buried, obviously I'm not aware of it. If I'm not aware of it, how can I change it? So now he's telling you, here is the cause of suffering. The here being the secret dream. Which really means the decision maker's decision for the secret dream. Here is the cause of suffering. The space between your little dreams and your reality. Because when we listen to the ego, this vertical line that represents the tiny mad idea is made real. And that's the gap between my dreaming mind and my true mind in heaven. So here is the cause of suffering. The space between your little dreams and your reality. The little gap you do not even see. The birthplace of illusions and of fear. The time of terror and of ancient hate. The instant of disaster, all are here. Here is the cause of unreality, and it is here that it will be undone. This is so clear. Here will be undone. This is the here. The mind's decision to sleep, fall asleep, and dream a dream of separation, sin, guilt, and fear. Here is where it will be undone, not in the world. Why would you ask Jesus to come into the world to help you solve a problem here? A very good reason why you would do that. Because you're terrified that he's in your mind. And if he's in your mind, so are you. And if you're in your mind, you're a decision maker, because that's all the mind is, which means you could choose again. This is so clear. Here is the cause of your suffering, not in the world, not in the body, not in a hurricane, not in an atomic bomb, not in a rape, not in abuse, not in murder, not in a traffic jam. Here is the cause of the suffering. Here is the cause of unreality, and it is here that it will be undone. Again, this is a very simple course because everything is seen as the same. But you can see how complicated we've made things. This world is extraordinarily complicated. As we all know, maintaining this body is extraordinarily complicated. The amount of time and effort it takes, it demands every day. And this is only on the gross physical level. Throw in the psychological level. You know, and all the complications we have to deal with in relationships with people. Extraordinarily complicated. There's a purpose, because salvation is simple. One problem, one solution. I chose the ego, I now choose the Holy Spirit. End the problem. So rather than deal with the simplicity of the answer and of the problem, we make everything incredibly complicated. Christian theology is extraordinarily complicated. Do you know what you have to do and how, what you have to do to love and truth to bend it around and distort it so it, it ends up that Jesus suffered and died on the cross for our sins? It's so much simpler to say nothing happened. Nothing is happening now. That's my only problem is that I believe that something happened and it's still happening. You don't have to analyze. Don't analyze anything here. 
Don't be a, quote, good course of miracles student, unquote, and analyze your ego. The ego loves that. Thrives on it. The only thing you ever have to know about why you're upset is you chose the wrong teacher. And you're given power to the illusion. What could be simpler than that? Nothing you say or do can hurt me. Are thoughts dangerous? To bodies, yes, the Course said. Yeah, of course. But I'm not my body. Right? Few of us are up to the level of really knowing we are not our bodies. But I could begin the process of realizing that whatever you do to my body has no effect or should have no effect on the peace of God in my mind, unless I give you that power. Now you understand why we don't want to awaken. The real reason we don't want to awaken is because there's no I in heaven. But the reason the ego gives us for not wanting to awaken is if you awaken, you're going to be right back here, and guess what? God will get you. So in that earlier section in the text called The Fear to Look Within, it says, now the ego counsels thus. Do not look within in your mind, for if you do, your eyes will light on sin and God will strike you blind. A euphemistic way of saying God will destroy you. Again, what could be clearer than that? This course is so clear. Do not look within your mind because if you do, this secret dream will kill you. And we say, oh my God, I forgot. Boom, we're right back here. That's why whenever you start to make right-minded choices and you start to take this course seriously, or in the language of the course, you begin to take the Holy Spirit's evaluation of you seriously, and you go back to your mind and you start to become more right-minded, there's that little voice that says, watch it, I warned you. This Holy Spirit character is not to be trusted. Indeed, God created him after the separation. But you know why he created him? To entrap you with his sweet words that drip with honey of love and peace and joy and eternal bliss and happiness and all that stuff. And don't believe a word of it, because he will get you and bring you back, and there is no I in heaven. You will not disappear into the heart of God. You'll be annihilated into oblivion. Boom. We go right back to our friends. And we come to this friend, and this is no friend, and we go back to the world and body. And even though we all read this course and believe it's the voice of sanity, the interesting thing to ponder is why don't I listen to it? I know what it says. I believe what it says. Why don't I live it? This explains why you don't live it. Because we feel we're better off with the world's dream that you know, or the devil you know is better than the devil you don't. I, I can at least deal with this. I'm not happy here, but at least I know how to kind of negotiate my way through the, uh, the perilous waters. But I don't want to get anywhere near my mind. The purpose of understanding all this in terms of, its, of a theory is to apply it to your everyday personal life. So whenever you're tempted to get upset about anything, think about this. This is not happening here. There is no here. Now, you don't have to experience that, that there is no here, but you can begin the process of experiencing that I'm never upset for the reason I think. I think I'm upset because of the, the way people are driving on the freeway, or serving me in the restaurant, or the way my, my wife, husband, lover, friend is treating me, or my children treat me, or the way my parents treated me or the way my president is treating me. I think that's why I'm upset. And I get lots of people to agree with me. That's a lie. At this stage on our journey, we can't stop lying, but we at least don't have to believe in it. <laughs> right? And that's a distinction. That is possible. You could watch yourself project, but you don't have to believe in the projection. You could watch yourself get really enraged and make up all kinds of stories to support the rage but it is possible to step back enough that you can watch yourself doing it and realize, I don't have to believe in this. I've done this already. I know this, this, this script. I know I've done it over and over again. That's the beginning of the process of, of ending the ego's reign, which really is our, our choosing the ego.